उदय हेलो उदय हाँ सर कैन यू हियर मी एस ओके हजार <laughs> सर <laughs> 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 हेलो जाधव सर यस चालू वी स्टार्ट या यस प्लीज हेलो भागवत सर हाँ सर विल बिगिन यस हट इज गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम टू वन एंड ऑल फॉर फिफ्थ डे ऑफ वन वीक ऑनलाइन फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम ऑन इनोवेटिव ट्रेंड्स इन फार्मास्यूटिकल साइंसेस वी बिगिन विथ सेवन सेशन ऑफ दिस प्रोग्राम द स्पीच बाय डॉक्टर एन आर जाधव सर प्रोफेसर एंड हेड Department of Pharmaceutics, Bharti Vidyapeet College of Pharmacy, Kolhapur. I request Ditti Gaikwad sir to kindly introduce us to our guest speaker, Dr. N R Jadhav sir. Thank you, sir. Good morning to all, respected principal Dr. H N Morris sir, faculties and dear delegates. On the behalf of Bharti Vidyapeet College of Pharmacy, Kolhapur, I heartily welcome today's speaker, faculties and delegates in this one week F T P program. it gives me an immense pleasure to welcome and introduce our today's speaker dr n r jadhav sir 
is dedicating charming good hearted multifaceted personality i really thanks to dr jadhav sir for presence as a resource person for this fdp program he is presently working as a professor and head department of pharmaceutics bharti vidyapeeth college of pharmacy kolapo he is recipient of barrister pg patil ideal teacher award 2013 shivaji university kolapur and seva gaurav puraskar 2019 at bharti vidyapeeth pune he has total teaching and research experience of 22 years so far guided 65 students for m pharmacy level and guiding six students for phd out of that two phd's have been awarded he is working at shiva university kolapur as a member board of studies as well as a member of research advisory committee he has worked in various capacities as chief coordinator coordinator convener and scientific committee chairman member for various national conferences like apti frontiers in drug discovery and process research and national symposia his research area include particle engineering includes nanonization amorphism and stabilization of solid state pharmaceuticals design of novel drug delivery system for poorly soluble drugs and phytoceuticals he received research funding from shivaji university kolapur department of science and technology all india council for technical education council for scientific and industrial research rajiv gandhi science and technology commission also he holds a membership of indian society for technical education registered as a pharmacist mahar state pharmacy council association of pharmaceutical teachers of india and member the international nano science community with this brief introduction i would like to request dr jadhav sir to address our delegates on insight to sericulture sir, recycle sir. waste for pharmaceutical best please sir thank you professor dt gaikwad sir for a, such a wonderful introduction i'll just share the slide professor uday is this slide visible yes yes visible yes <clears throat> at the outset i would like to thank all delegates for their presence for today's session and uh, i am extremely thankful to honorable principal dr h n morey sir for giving me an opportunity to speak from this stage on the topic insight to sericulture recycle waste for pharmaceutical best friends whenever we talk about sericulture industry obviously the thing which comes before to our mind is silk making main line sericulture industry deals with the silk production in addition to that in addition to that there are so many things which are associated in the sericulture industry but usually we overlook it so what is my perspective is to focus on those wests which are a part of sericulture industry for that i can call it as like wests of sericulture industry and we are trying to explore those wests as a pharmaceutical best in the form of maybe excipient in the form of medicine we are trying to explore it it doesn't mean that no one has tried it so far but if you look at the industrial scenario if you look at specifically the indian scenario least work is being contributed on this especially if i talk about our country very least work has been contributed on sericine which is one waste of sericulture industry second waste of sericulture industry is a fibroin again i am going to focus on fibroin applications now third which is major waste of sericulture industry is mulberry leaves which is surplus cultivation of mulberry and uh, in addition to this fourth waste is there which is called as pupa or silkom so i am going to focus on that as well after this i will be a bit speaking about what are startup opportunities which are available into the sericulture and how we can think of sustainable developments into the sericulture industry and then i'll come to the conclusion now during my presentation i am going to walk you through sericulture its sericin its applications solubility and dissolution enhancement related applications amorphous form stabilization related applications and application of sericul uh, sericin as a nano crystal stabilizer next as far as fibroin applications are concerned i am going to use this fibroin or rather i have used this fibroid in preparation of floating microspheres then preparation of nano fibers and fibroin as a nano crystal stabilizer and mulberry leaves as a anti diabetic herb so these are the things what we are going to explore during the course of presentation now friends if you look at the global scenario of sericulture you will find china is the biggest cultivator of sericulture i mean sericulture now china contributes to the extent of 79 to 80% of 
wool's requirement whereas 15% of silk is contributed by india and only 5% of silk which is being produced and used across globe is contributed by countries like brazil italy france japan russia and korea now in addition to this there are certain countries which recently have entered into the sericulture farming they are i must tell you thailand is there then cuba is there so these are two countries mainly they have entered into the sericulture farming now if you see the trend with the time you will find the people are entering into the sericulture farming obviously one main streamlined product is the silk but in addition to that secondary industries are getting developed across the globe but unfortunately in india you don't find that scenario now globally if you talk about the silk which is obtained it is obtained from obviously cocoons so every year 4 lakh metric tons of cocoons are produced dry cocoons i am talking about and from that the silk fibers which are separated they are to the tune of 1 lakh 59648 metric tons this is figure of 2018 out of this silk fibers which are being produced china contributes to the extent of 1 lakh 20000 metric tons whereas india contributes to the extent of 35261 metric tons means almost our sericulture industry is one fourth of china and when you talk about rest of countries they are contributing very meager amount now if you talk about indian scenario karnataka is the major state which is cultivating which is having a sericulture farming second is andhra tamil nadu then to some extent you find in jammu and kashmir as well as you can find to some extent in maharashtra specifically mahabaleshwar region and the region which is nearby to the uh, kolapur uh, we call it as uh, that uh, elgur it's nearby to the kolapur right and uh, we were fortunate to visit those sericulture farms which are nearby to the kolapur basically there are two types of silks why i am telling this background because it is very important the way silk is important similarly rest of the products or i would say that west of sericulture industry they are equally important now basically there are two types of silks one is called as mulberry silk and second is called as non mulberry silk now depending upon the way silkomes are reared the way silkomes are reared if you use mulberry plant for rearing of the silkomes or what you call it as a silk worm then that is called as mulberry silk for rearing of the silkome rearing means eating for feeding for rearing of the silkome if you use some other plants then they are called as non mulberry silk now commercially people go for this mulberry silk or you can say mulberry silk type at a large level and simultaneously non mulberry silk especially if you talk about the indian scenario this is widely cultivated in north east regions of india non mulberry silk now basically if you talk about mulberry plant or you can say mulberry leaves which are used for rearing of bombyx mori silkome basically in india there are two types of those plants one is morus indica which is indigenous variety which has been developed in india and another variety is morus alba now you might have come across the literature that whatever we call it as a mulberry it has got tremendous medicinal importance but it has been unexplored in india now second thing what we talk about is so non mulberry silk now one is called as tasar silk so which is reared on wild plants second is muga silk it is reared on mathilus bombicina third one is oat oak silk which is reared on uh, grevillea robusta and fourth one is eri silk that is what is reared on the ricinus communis nis so these are four type of non mulberry silks and this is one is mulberry silk so whatever sericulture farming we find in uh, kolapur or nearby it is mulberry kind of silk or you can say sericulture farming is carried out now how this actually rearing is carried out we were fortunate to visit as i said this mulberry farms so nearby to the kolapur this is what is mulberry which has been cultivated and these mulberry leaves are used as a food material for the silkworms or this is also called as silkomes so they consume this food and after that they start secretion of the protein which you called as a fiber these are the houses which you can find here see these are present in the mulberry farms itself which are made for rearing which are made for rearing and this is the inner view of those houses now here you can this ladies you can find like say see 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 is uh, spreading those mulberry leaves on those trays and those tray i mean those trays are kept in the racks so this is actual view of how the silkomes are reared and the way they consume mulberry leaves as a food material 
with that gradually they start secreting silk and this is what is silk cocoon what you can see at the center now here whatever cocoon has been produced it's not a single silk which is being produced in addition to this there is something which is called a sericine and in india you will find that sericine is not used at all now so this is a major waste of sericine this is major waste of sericulture industry and this sericine what i am talking about it contributes to the extent of 30% weight so 70% weight is contributed in the cocoon by fibroin and 30% weight is contributed by sericine in the cocoon means simply so whatever sericine is there which is cementing substance it's a glue like protein see both are proteins this is fibroin filament fibroin fiber which you can see at a center this is another fiber and both fibers are joined together by this sericine which is cementing substance which is uh, which is a sealing material what you can call it as it's a glue like material which is a protein this fibroin is also protein sericine is also protein and literally as of now you will be surprised to know so this sericine is not recovered at all in india this is literally connected to the drainage pipelines so out of 4 lakh metric tons of cocoons produced every year globally 50000 metric tons of sericine is separated and that is literally going to the drainage lines means it is a simple waste which is uh, there in the sericulture industry now how this silk is separated so as i said these are the silk cocoons which are composed of sericine and fibroin and second there are different methods by which this silk sericine and uh, silk and sericine can be separated the process of separation of sericine is called as degumming of sericine process of separation of sericine is called as degumming of sericine so once you separate the sericine what will be left behind are silk fibers and these silk fibers are of interest of the people so simply you can go for boiling in a water acidic treatments are there enzymatic treatments are there alkali treatments are there articulating is there so many treatments are given at industrial level depending upon the feasibility people go for it and here this is what is sericine which is connected to the drainage lines so whatever is a vessi basically i will be separating these fibers these are silk fibers whatever is left out in this container is sericine which has been dissolved in water because sericine is hydrophilic in nature second thing is that in addition to this in this container you will be finding a pupa which is silk worm which was present inside and that was not recovered so that will be a part of this waste so currently in case of sericulture industry there are two waste which goes to the drain number one sericine which is a protein and number two pupa or you can say silk worm that is again a rich of protein in certain countries you will find it has been widely used as a food material it is rich of proteins pupa whenever we talk about even in northeast region you will find so that is given as a welcome dish to the people like say dried and fried pupa even when i had been to one of uh, the country there i could find at airport that was being served as a uh, 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 fried material for eating purpose so it is said that pupa is a capsule of proteins i must tell you the china military is provided with this protein of pupa or you can say powder of the pupa so obviously this is very good resource which we can think upon one has to work on now these are the methods by which i which uh, as i said the same sericine can be separated from the silk worm so initially what we did we try to collect whatever sericine waste is there from reeling houses which are there in nearby to the kolapur we initially visited to the Uh, islampur region there are certain reeling houses then we visited to the region uh, watar there are certain reeling houses but it was very difficult because it's protein when we, say, when, we, when we say it is a protein when we say it is a protein so obviously degradation in water is going to take place and that was a basic reason why we uh, used cocoons as such for extraction of sericine and use of that sericine further in pharmaceutical applications now these are certain methods just now i talked to you about So acid degumming is there autoclaving is there boiling water enzyme degumming and alkyl degumming method so the best yield which we found was with 0.5% na2co3 and uh, then further dialysis is carried out either you can, after dialysis when you know all salt then ions and every impurity has been removed so you can subject it to the lyophilization or you can go for spray drying as well it's up to you so basically as i said sericine is a protein which is water soluble it is waste of food's contribution is 30% in the weight of cocoon and currently it is unexplored yes to some extent it is used in the cosmetic industry i remember once during for one of my first student so we procured sericine and it, our food's cost was for 10 g they charged us 2000 for 10 g they charged us 2000 
And if you see the West series in which goes, so no one thinks of it, no one is bothered about it. Say it is water soluble, its molecular weight is 10 to 300 kilodaltons. It has got plenty of polar amino acids. And currently it is used as a food because it has got essential amino acids as well. It is used in cosmetics as well as biomaterials. Now, if you look at the chemical composition, so why we would like to look at the chemical composition? Because as I said in the beginning, so I'm going to explore its pharmaceutical applications. So obviously my first application, which I have explored was use of the sericins. As I said, sericin is hydrophilic in nature. So because of its hydrophilicity, what I thought, so when hydrophilicity is there, obviously it is going to favor hydrogen bond formation with the drug molecules. Currently, whatever drugs are available, majority of drugs, they are poorly soluble and they contribute to the extent of 60 to 70%. And if you are able to improve the solubilization as well as these, obviously, bioavailability is going to get improved. And from that viewpoint, what we thought, sericulture of West, which is a sericin, being hydrophilic, probably it may undergo hydrogen bond formation with the drug molecules. And because of hydrogen bond formation, because of hydrophilic interaction, probably it may enhance the solubility as well as diso. That was the first assumption which we put forth and later on it was proved, yes, it worked very well. So basically, I must tell you aspartic acid is there, which is obviously polar amino acid. Then serine is there, which is in abundance. Glutamic acid is there and arginine is there. Arginine is cationic amino acid. So glutamic acid, sericin is non-ionic, polar and aspartic acid and glutamic acid, these are uh, 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 anionic amino acids. So what we thought, so probably these amino acids may interact with the drug, that was our hypothesis, what initially we prepared, and uh, we will be getting excipient for solubility and disease improvement, and moreover, it's a need, because for Indian scenario, basically we focus on repurposing of drug, basically we focus on physicochemical modification of drug, because we don't afford to deal with a drug discovery process where thousands of crores are required to be invested. Now, the second waste, what I'm going to speak about is a fibroin. So once the silk has been separated, whatever is left out, so it may be having certain small fibers of the fibroids are there, then certain jointed fiber, fibers of the silk are there, and that is a waste which cannot be used in you know, textiles and all, that is treated currently as a fibroin waste. It is also not recycled by the people. So what is a property of this? So it is water insoluble. It has got molecular weight 22 to 400 kilodaltons. It has got non-polar amino acids. Then it is used in textile, biomaterial, and cosmetic applications. It is not like that sericin and fibroin have not been used so far. Yes, people have used it. But what is my focus is, so can we think of recycling those? Can we think of recollecting those and exclusively so we can supply to the pharma industry? We can think of that option as well. So here, what interesting thing which I came across, because whenever we design any of the formulation or whenever we deal with uh, you know, pharmaceutics as such, so what we look at, we look at three things. Number one thing we look at is polymer, hydrophilicity, lipophilicity. So I got a polymer, which is hydrophilic, that was a sericin. Second polymer, I got fibroin, which is hydrophobic in nature. So for tailor-made drug release profile, what you require, you need to balance hydrophilicity and lipophilicity, so obviously. So we have got a, you know, plenty of opportunities here to use sericin in combination with fibroin, or you can use them alone. And this is one more emerging field we are working on, like proteinylation of these proteins can be carried out. So whatever sericin as well as fibroin is there, it can be chemically modified, keeping in mind antigenicity and all issues. But obviously, here, the chemistry can be played so that chemical modification of this polymer can be carried out. So probably, so this proteinylation can be one area with which you can look at as a prospective area. So these are some amino acids, say glycine is there, then alanine is there, tyrosine is there. So these are the amino acids which are present in the uh, fibroid. And what we thought, yes, probably they may have some interaction with the drug molecules. Now this is, you know, very important thing in case of sericulture industry, as I said. Majority of people in sericulture industry use mulberry leaves as a rearing material, as a food material for silk homes. Now currently, there is no way of recycling these mulberry leaves. Number one thing, if it is surplus production, surplus cultivation of the mulberry leaves, what people they do, they literally use it as a feed for the cattle. Sometimes they use it as a manure. But one interesting thing is that this mulberry leaves have got a huge protein, medicinal potential, what you can call it as. And that is why in traditional literature, it has been reported as a tree of life, the herb of immortality. So this makes me to think, so why it is called as a tree of life, the herb of immortality? When we can go into the deeper understanding of the chemical constituents and the mechanism which are involved, you know, as far as the biological processes are 
seen, you will find it has got plenty of chemical constituents. Say, for example, one deoxynosirimycin, one DNJ, it is called as. So you might be knowing that. So miglitol is very good anti-diabetic drug, which belongs to the acarbose category. This miglitol has been derived from a lead, one deoxynosirimycin. Simply one CH2 group has been put into the one DNJ, it forms a miglitol, and it has been used as alpha glucosidase inhibitor clinically as well. So the use of this mulberry is very good anti-diabetic. So one, as I said, one DNJ, one principal constituent of this. In addition to this, it has got, say, different quercetins are there, isoquercetin is there, rutin is there, moracin is there, quanol is there. You know, n number of active constituents are there. And I hope uh, looking at those active constituents and uh, probably the new field which has opened up in pharmacology, that is network pharmacology, will be able to find out something great out of this plant because it is a herb of immortality. Miss, what, why it is called as herb of immortality? Because I could come across in the literature, it is very good antioxidant. It has got anti-aging properties. Then it is used as anti-hyperlipidemia material. It is used in the treatment of obesity. It is used as an anti-diabetic. And moreover, it is a food for silicone. We'll keep this aside. But if you look at these three main activities, you will find, yes, they are essential for prevention of aging process. If to some extent at a certain level, as I said, it has got plenty of antioxidants also. If you are able to block the aging process, so probability this can be a wonder, wonder plant which can help you to prevent the aging and simultaneously it can take care of your diabetes, it can take care of your cholesterol, obesity and everything can be take care, taken care. Now more war, so this is a food material of the silk home. So what we can do, whatever has been left out, so you can just wash whatever has been left out and you can recycle it, you can use it as a medicine. Whatever has been overproduced, you can use it and you can use it as a medicine. So this is the perspective with which I'm looking at it as. So mulberry leaves can be used for medicinal applications. In detail, we'll be talking about that later on. This is fourth application, as I said. Yes, fortunately, in Northeast region, this is being served. This is widely consumed by the people. But if you look at its composition, this is a silicone, or you can say it is called as pupa, which is present inside the cocoon. So when we go for separation of silk, from sericine, or you can say sericine from the silk, what we do is we simply boil that cocoon. And when the cocoon has been boiled, whatever pupa inside is there, so that is removed along with the sericine and it is thrown away literally at something yesterday. I was talking with one of my professor friends. He told me its cost is five rupees per kg. And if you see the its protein value, see, you can just have a look at it. What it has, it has out everything. It has got phosphorus, it has got calcium, it has got crude fiber, the nitrogen 5.68 then protein 35.53. Now this has been reared on ricinus. Whatever this pupa is there, so this has, uh, 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 is reared on the ricinus. And if you use mulberry leaves for rearing, then this percentage of protein can be increased from 35 to 72 or 75 percent also. Cellulose, organic carbon and potassium is there. So after looking at these contents, obviously you will be you know, believing in, yes, it's a protein capsule, it's an energy capsule. So this can be considered as a nutrient because nowadays we talk about nutraceuticals and all from that perspective, we can think of this waste to be recycled. So obviously this can, so you know, all these four waste, if you use properly, this can bring about some sustainable developments to the sericulture industry. Now the first application, what I'm going to speak about is solubility and dissolution improvements and amorphous form stabilization. So what we did, we selected three model drugs belonging to the BCS2, Lornoxia, Melanxia, and Philodipine. So which had different proton acceptor, proton donor of whose total polar topological polar surface area was different. So this is Philodipine, Lornoxia, and Melanxia. So they have different proton acceptors, donors, and surface area. And this is what is next is sericine. This is what is sericine. So which has got, you know, OH and H. Now, if you observe these structures, whatever arrows are there, so where you have got o, OH, OH, double bond O, H, certain donors are there, certain acceptors are there, double bond O, H and H. So here you can find, obviously, the number of donors and acceptors are different. Here you will find OH is there, then O is there. So likeliness is that, so they may favor hydrogen bond formation. So these drug molecules may undergo hydrogen bond formation with the sericine. Maybe say this OH will undergo bond formation with the double O something, or this hydrogen will be undergoing bond formation with the oxygen. So this is what hydrogen bonding, what we propose. And when the hydrogen bonding is there, so obviously solvation is going to take place, dissolution will be improved. Now, what is Indian industry usually talking about? As we said, majority of times we go for repurposing a drug. 
Majority of times, what we do, we go for modification of existing drug because that is affordable for us. And for that purpose, what Indian industry people do, or you can say research is being focused on, modification of these crystalline drug particles can be carried out. I'm talking about physical modification so that they will be transformed to the amorphous state. So crystalline state of the drug molecules is highly stable state. Amorphous state of drug molecule is highly unstable state. Because whenever you talk about amorphous drug particles, they have got high entropy. The degree of randomness is more and disorderness is more. And because of which it has got high energy. This is more thermodynamically unstable system. This is thermodynamically stable system. When system is thermodynamically unstable, chances are their solubility is going to be more. So now, so what we decided, so we decided to transform those drug molecules, which are in a crystalline state, to the amorphous state. We decided to transform them into the molecular level dispersion. Say, when you talk about solution, it's a molecular level dispersion. Whenever you talk about, say, for example, emulsified drug delivery systems, we dissolve, we put drug into the oily system. We dissolve drug with the help of surfactant. So these are molecularly dispersed drugs. Now here, if you think of these two, if it is a molecular dispersion of drug, or if it is amorphous dispersion of drugs, so obviously in this case, chances are there drug is going to get better absorbed, so bioavailability is going to be more. So whatever drugs are available, they are available in the crystalline state, being a stable state, first of all, what we need to do, we need to transform them to either amorphous state or molecular dispersed state. But unfortunately, what happens? Okay, fine, I went with transformation of crystalline form of the drug to the amorphous form of the drug, but unfortunately, what happens? Because as I said earlier, this is thermodynamically unstable system. The energy of the system is more, and when the energy of system is more, so what is going to happen? This system will try to favor recrystallization. This system will try to release its energy. This system will try to reduce its energy, and the process of devitrification will start. And here you will get semi-crystalline material will be obtained. This process of devitrification is nothing but the recrystallization. And on storage further, you will find whatever partially crystalline or semi-crystalline material is there, if moisture is there, if air is there. So what it will do, it will accelerate the process of recrystallization and ultimately crystallized material has been obtained. So initially, yes, you can send your drug to the molecular level, send your drug to the amorphous state, but because of high entropy, it is possible. Again, it may get transformed to the crystalline material. So as a formulator, it is our responsibility to keep drug in this state or this state by carrying out stabilization. Means simply, in simple words, I would say, take out energy of this. When energy has been brought down to the zero, system won't be thermodynamically unstable. System will be water soluble, but the energy has been reduced. The molecules are totally in a disordered state and because of which interactions are more and ultimately solubility as well as diso has been improved. So this is what is first approach, what we dealt with solubility, diso and amorphous form stabilization we tried for. Now, what are different strategies which have been adopted by people for amorphous state stabilization? The first one is hydrogen bond formation and electrostatic interactions. So you can reduce the entropy of the system by hydrogen bond formation, means polymer will bind with the drug molecules and uh, let it be hydrogen bonding, say it is one kind of electrostatic interaction. And second thing is storage below the glass transition temperature. You all people might be doing that glass transition temperature is a temperature where actually you find these two regions. One, below glass transition temperature, solid is available in amorphous state. Above glass transition temperature, material is available in the rubbery state. Rubbery state is also called as viscous state. It is also called as super cool liquid state where molecular movements are very high. Below grass transition temperature being amorphous material, it's a solid state material, molecular movements are less. So if you are storing material below glass transition temperature, it means that you are storing the drug below glass transition temperature means it is available in the amorphous state. Say for example, certain material has got glass transition temperature of say for example 30, certain material has got TZ. I'm storing this at say current temperature of today say 20, this is storing below glass transition temperature, it means that material is going to be available in amorphous state, right? Now, if it is stored at a high temperature, so as I said, say glass transition temperature of this drug is say, 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 say 30 degrees Celsius. And uh, imagine if I consume this material of whose TG or drug of whose uh, glass transition temperature is 30, if I consume this, the environment which is going to be provided maybe by orally, orally I took it, so the body temperature is 37. So what will happen now? TZ of that drug was less 30. My body temperature is 37. So it is as that of exposing that drug to the high temperature. And here what will happen? 
this material will be transforming into the rubbery state. When it goes to the rubbery or viscous state, you will find that it becomes a material which is very sticky rubbery, and that's why it shows haphazard or erratic solubility as well as dissolution, dissolution profile, which is not reproducible. So anyhow, as a formulator, I want a reproducible release, and for that purpose, I have to keep material below glass transition temperature, so it means in the amorphous state. And next one is anti-plasticizing effect of the polymer. So I can use a polymer which are going to prevent plasticization of the drug. If you use a plasticizer, that reduces glass transition temperature of the drug. And when the TJ has been lowered, the threat is that you may face a problem of getting transformation of drug into the supercooled liquid state. So as far as possible, polymer should anti-plasticize. If plasticizers are used, obviously glass transition temperature is reduced. Now, so we got this data from certain chem databases for these three drugs, Lornoxcam, Meloxcam, and Philodipine. It has got TPSA, you will find that. So relatively, Lornoxcam and Meloxcam are polar in nature and Philodipine is non-polar in nature. So if you talk about average lipophilicity, 1.74, Meloxcam 1.53 and 3.46. These are hydrogen or you can say proton donor numbers, 2 to 1 and proton acceptors, 653. Now this is what is sericin map, which we got it done from our chemistry department in our college. So here, this is what is chemistry, uh, this is what is surface map of the sericin. So this is what bluish, or you can say what you call uh, uh, violet color kind of thing is there, so which is hydrophilicity. So you can find more number of bluish regions, or you can say bluish domains. This indicates sericin is hydrophilic in nature. So virtually also we confirmed it. So sericin PDP was not available. So we got homology modeling done, and then sericin molecule was, uh, uh, I mean, designed, then it was refined and everything, whatever is to be done, it was done in uh, uh, chemistry department by our colleague. Dr. Praful Choudhury. Now, so this is what is the uh, hydrophobicity plot of different drug molecules. Now, here at upper one, I think you are not able to see because of something is seen here, that message. So first drug is Lornoxcam, second is Meloxcam, and third one is Philodipine. So this pink color is indicating hydrophobicity, bluish color is indicate bluish color is indicating uh, hydrophilicity. So this is more hydrophilic. The first molecule is more hydrophilic. This is less hydrophilic and this is least hydrophilic. Means meloxcam is more hydrophilic, uh, sorry, philodipine is more hydro, uh, hydrophobic, then comes your meloxcam and then comes your lornoxcam. Then we went for docking studies and for that purpose, so as I said in the beginning, looking at the composition of sericin, we said that sericin had serine, then lysine is there, glycine is there, arginine was there. So these were main four amino acids which were a part of sericin. And here, after docking studies, we could find, yes, lysine is there, which is interacting, residue 119, of whose distance, it's a hydrogen bond formation of lysine, residue 119, and distance between uh, this lysine and the drug molecule is 2.3 angstrom. So usually, in case of hydrogen bonds, if the distance is less than 2.5 angstrom, it is considered as a significant. Here, lysine 119 forms a bond with lornoxicam. And second interactions which were found, they were hydrophobic interactions. So they are considered as a significant when this distance is usually, I think, it is less than five angstrom. So these glutamic acid, lysine, so lysine was forming hydrogen bond along with the hydrophobic interactions also. And glutamic acid, it forms uh, hydrophobic interactions with the Lornox cam. So if you talk about Melox cam here, one thing you could find, yes, obviously amino acids are same with which drug is interacting, Melox cam is interacting, but this distance was less. You can just clearly have a look at it. See, lysine 119 residue is interacting with the drug at distance of 1.9 angstrom. So this is less compared to this 2.3 angstrom. And this hydrogen bonding is very strong. And probably what we could conclude, yes, this can be you know very good bonding, which is going to take place between Melox cam and sericin. And third one, philodipine, what we could observe, only glutamic acid is interacting that with hydrophobic interaction. So obviously it is a weak interaction. You all know about it. So here from this, we concluded, yes, meloxcam can have better interaction. Meloxcam can have better stabilization. Meloxcam uh, can have a better solubilization as well as diso when it is present in, uh, in, in solid dispersion or when it is present as a composite in presence, uh, uh, composite as a uh, that drug and sericin. Say what we did to confirm it, because whatever virtually we do, it needs to be validated with the practical work or you can say weight lab work needs to be carried out. So we prepared initially different uh, 
plots for phase solubility and from that we got to know that 1 has to 2 proportion is the optimum proportion and uh, therein we could find in case of saturation solubility study 8 to 10 fold increase in saturation solubility of drug takes place at 1 has to 2 level of drug to sericin this 8 to 10, 10 fold enhancement in the solubility is there so obviously it's apparent solubility and that was attributed to the presence of sericin now what we did we went for preparation of solid dispersions we went for these four methods physical mixture ball milling solvent evaporation and spray drying as one can very well anticipate as far as solubility diso amorphous form stabilization everything has been concerned so spray drying is always going to supersede over this rest of the things is obviously results were same as uh, similar uh, were same on the similar lines now so here whatever findings we have reported they are more concerned with the spray drying because the outcomes of this were not up to the mark the way we anticipated how the solid dispersion is going to look like so this is a poor soluble drug maybe sericin so the drug has been entrapped into the polymeric chase polymer has got different oh co uh, oh and uh, hydrogen uh, coh functional groups which is going to form bond with the drug so it is going to be some kind of entrapment now one interesting thing what we came across so this is what is at low magnification this is at high magnification you can just look at say a2 b2 c2 and d2 so these are acm images or micro photographs of first one is lornoxicam lornoxicam series in spray dried material this is what is meloxicam series in spray dried material phenylalanine and series in spray dried composite and this is what is plain series in this is very interesting to be note, noted now here we could find in case of Lornox cam and Melox cam, relatively bowel shape morphology, what we observed it was more in case of Lornox cam. To some extent, we could observe it in Melox cam. Now, if you look at those blank, whatever spheres which you obtained in case of sericin, they were not having a drug. So they were hollow, they were corrugated, they were perforated. And basically, this is of very interest, great interest, specifically when you talk about, say, pulmonary drug delivery, when you want to use this polymer as a carrier for some drug, because if you see its surface morphology, so it has got a plenty of cavities wherein, wherein you can load your drug. So this is what cavity, these are the cavities in which drug can be used and drug can be loaded. So this can be treated as excellent carrier, which can carry drug from the site where it has been required to. So this is what was the interesting finding in addition to what we were interested in preparing as a, a spray dried material. So usually whenever we talk about spray drying, we get a spheres, but we didn't get a spheres here. So there are so many reasons, maybe it's related with the solvent composition as well. It is related with certain optimization parameters as well. Then proportion, or you can say quantity of sericin is there, then amount of drug is there. So everything has a played role over that. And because of which we, we could find, interestingly, this morphology, and we have continued our work on this as a carrier for different type of drug delivery dosage forms. So as Every dosage form has to be formulated into certain, I mean, every, every whatever raw material is there has to be formulated into certain dosage form. So we checked micrometrics and tablet availability of whatever blends are there, which are obtained by the spray drying. So it had acceptable flow properties. Everything was acceptable. So this A and B, so you all know, I need not to tell you about angle of repose, cars compressibility and house service ratio. So this A and B are Kawakita constants usually. So Kawakita constants A and B are related with the flyability and compressibility. So usually it is said that A has to be less and B has to be more. When A is less compared to B, it means whatever that binary system is there or composite system is there, it is flowable. And when B is more, it means that, so it is very good compressible material because B is universally proportional to yield strain. So indirectly, this B tells you about compressibility. So this we got from the Kawakita plot. So it had excellent flowability as well as compressibility. Now this mean yield pressure we got from the Heckel equation, you know very well, ln one upon uh, 1 minus rd is equal to kyp plus a so it's a plot of pressure versus relative density so as far as possible the myp or mean yield pressure has to be less it was a less in all these three samples which we obtained by spray drying so that was having a drug and sericin then see usually people get confused with compressibility and compactibility so this mean yield pressure is given by heckel plot that will tell you about the resistance which is offered by solid during compression it's related with only resistance offered by solid during compression. But what about, so this is what is, again, to some extent going to tell you about the compressibility. But when it comes to the compactibility, it is related with the actual tensile strength. It is related with the actual bonding of the particulate or inter-particulate interactions are decided made by the compactibility and that is not given by pressure relative density plot of Heckel or it is not given by Kawakita plot. It is given by 
Leuenberger equation. That equation is sigma t is equal to sigma t max. I haven't written here, but simply I tell you sigma t is equal to sigma t max into bracket one minus uh, gamma into e raised to gamma into pressure into relative density. So it's a plot of pressure into relative density versus tensile strength. So as far as possible. So this compactibility, which is sigma t max, which is a part of equation, it has to be more means tensile strength has to be more. It means that for a long time, the integrity of that tablet is going to be maintained. And this is what is compression susceptibility, which is gamma. So it was again acceptable. So if you look at carefully this accelerated stability study data, so which is shown as a diffractogram, the first is Lorenz camp sericin dispersion, which is spray dried. Second is Melong's camp sericin dispersion, which is again spray dried. And third one is philodipine sericin dispersion, which is spray dried. Now, as a control, what we did here. Plain drug, neat drug has been spray dried. So this is what you can see. So in this Lornong's camp, it's a plain drug which has been spray dried. Uh, this is a plain drug. So here what we did, uh, yes, ha, huh. plain drug. So here you can see this is spray dried Lornong's camp. Neat drug, spray dried Melong's camp. Neat drug, spray dried. Neat drug, spray dried philodipine, right? Now, this is what is the lower, uh, this second last uh, graph, uh, second last uh, diffractogram that is of spray dried solid dispersion. Spray dried solid dispersion. So, this has got sericin and lorinal scam. After one month of 40 75 stability, usual stability, what is the scenario? Yes. Now, here, when you spray dried and the fresh sample, when it was subjected to the diffractometric analysis, we could find it's the total drug has been transformed into the amorphous state. Now, second month, or you can say this is this is fresh. This is first month. At the end of first month, what we could find, yes, still it is amorphous drug. Third, amorphous. Second, amorphous. And this is what is third, which is amorphous. Now here you can find whatever spray dried drug is there. Yes, obviously, whenever we freshly spray dried, it's in amorphous state. But after one month, you could find. So whatever initially it was amorphous, it was devoid of sericin. It was not having a sericin. Immediately it undergone recrystallization. Immediately, it undergone devitrification process. Obviously, we have a room to say, you can say here, yes, this stabilization was because of sericin, which didn't allow the devitrification process to take place. Whereas, when you spray dried a plain drug, neat drug, at that time, he was devitrified in one month time period only. Same thing happened here in case of Melon's camp. We could have a better stabilization. We could have a better amorphous state generation. And in case of Melong's cam, at say fresh sample of the, the neat drug, which was sent for uh, spray drying, and after uh, that it was sent to the uh, diffractometric analysis, here we could find, here we could find, so yes, it was in our first state, but later it has again undergone devitrification process. Now, in this case, whenever we talked about, whenever we talked about philodipine, as I said, in case of virtual studies, the interactions were weak in case of philodipine, and here you could say that, yes, right from the beginning, fresh sample was also crystalline to some extent. Gradually with this time, in case of stability samples, crystallinity went on increasing. When plain drug or neat drug, when we spread right, it was a crystalline. And even after one month, again, it has regained the same crystallinity. So what it concludes, yes, Lorinal scam and Melon scam, they are better stabilized. So as spray drying is a process along with, uh, you know, you know that freeze drying as well as spray drying, these are the two techniques, those who transform material into the amorphous form. So here, obviously, spray drying is going to play a role into the transformation of material into the amorphous form. But here, it can be very well ruled out. Yes, because of the polymer, it has stabilized the material. Mere spray drying and its transform transformation of material to the amorphous form is not going to help. So you need to require something additional to be put in. And that is what sericin has a played important role. And what we can conclude from this, which is again supported by the DSA data is, so whatever interactions are there, hydrogen bonding and whatever we see, saw so this, all interactions related to lysine, glutamic acid. So they play a pivotal role in stabilization of polymer and drug, or you can say drug and polymer. Now this data is DSC data, which is showing you. So these are neat drug thermograms. So this is Lorinal scam, this is Melon scam and philodipine. So here you find exotherm because if drug is getting degraded at the time of melting, then sometimes you get a exothermic transition. And uh, certain exotherms are seen here. Certain small endotherms are also seen in this case. So polymers being a natural, 
whatever we have used in natural polymer to some extent it holds heterogeneity and simultaneously when strong interactions are taking place between drug and the polymer chances are there some exothermic as a, along with endothermic interactions are going to operate now so this is neat lornell's camera and uh, sericin is here it is seen like a very uh, broad endothermic transition maybe it is because of moisture because it is hydrophilic in nature and solid dispersion fresh sample one month two month and three month and this is pure drug and this is lorenal scam so now here you can see again so plain lorenal scam had a sharp crystalline peak or crystallinity peak same peak has been regained in the one month sample which was devoid of sericin so sericin has stabilized stabilized here you didn't find sharp exothermic fix as that of what you could find here it means that dsc also confirmed same findings are here also in case of melox cap but unfortunately in case of pelodipine you can find this is sericin and uh, this is sericin uh, thermogram in case of fresh sample of uh, solid dispersion yes it is clear but first month second month third month yes you can see small endothermic transitions are seen and this is in an indication of dv triplication process which has taken place in case of fresh i mean diffractometric analysis which we carried out for neat drug which was spray dried yes immediately it devitrified means during the process of dsc to some extent you expose your drug to the surrounding it might have absorbed moisture and because of which the phase transition might have taken place and see this is what is endotherm so this indicates devitrification has carried out so now the next thing what i would like to tell you dizo so these are neat drugs so of whose dizo is very less in say 120 minutes what we have reported it is say up to 20% and in case of this is what is compact and this is what is solid dispersion so this in 120 minutes almost all drug has been getting dissolved all drug has been dissolved when tablet has been prepared obviously yes rate has been reduced but ultimately the cumulative amount of drug which has been dissolved it is same so this indicates that so sericin can be treated as a better stabilizer for amorphous state sericin can be as i said in the previous uh, slide sericin can increase the solubility by 8 to 10 fold for majority of uh, poorly soluble drugs and third thing is that it is enhancing the dzo also <clears throat> now this is what is uh, in vitro dissolution data what you can find this is what is zero month data and this is what is third month data so this is what say for example lornal scam 29.14% of drug has been dissolved right same drug when it was spray dried and a fresh sample was subjected to the dzo you could find yes 90.17% of drug has been dissolved fresh drug drug alone i am talking about and at the end of third month that dzo came down to 33.86 this is because of transformation of amorphous material to the crystalline drug now when you talk about spray dried lornox cam solvent evaporation ball milled and physical mixture you can find physical mixture also because of solid state interactions enhances the dzo ball milling has been widely used by people for generation of amorphous state during the milling process whatever structured morphology is there order state is there long order crystals are there they are broken down into very short order crystals or you can say they are broken down into the disordered state or what you call it as the period so here in case of solvent evaporation of drug has been dissolved compared to rest all so rest are less this is more so here we can say that yes spray drying is the best method and seri is a, sericin is the best material which can enhance the dzo improve the solubility as well as so it depends upon the drug type of drug some drugs may show devitrification maybe say in few months some drug may show devitrification in few days as well depending upon the type of drug the way it is going to interact with the surrounding and all so many factors are there so here also you will find so the best method was spray drying and the dzo is quite good the material is amorphous same thing was applicable in pelodipine but here you can find see in case of pelodipine which was spray dried as a neat drug see 26% dzo after 3 months so devitrification is very high and spray dried pelodipine 93% dzo is there so relatively yes even if it is written amorphously so when we went for quantitation of the crystallinity it had a crystallinity rather all had a little crystallinity which i am going to show in the next slide see spray dried lornox cam when immediately we spray dried it and we analyzed it and uh, we calculated crystallinity using dsc thermogram it was 2.41 at the end of third month it was 7.4 spray dried melox cam 3.48 initial crystallinity zero month to 
and failure dip in 4.5 to 18.31. I don't say send percent, 100 percent it has stabilized the amortization. I don't say send percent it has improved the solubility or dissolution. But obviously there is a scope to say yes, it is a very good excipient which can improve solubility, diso as well as bioavailability. And that bioavailability data you can confirm from this. See Tmax value. If you see this is pure drug, need drug, Lorenz cam, Lorenz cap tablet. Melox can pure drug, then Melox can tablet. And here you can find, see, this is Tmax, three hours Tmax of Lorenz cam, which has been brought down to two hours. What does it indicate? When Tmax has been reduced, it means that solubility has been improved, diso has been improved. It is going to help us in reducing the onset of action. I mean, reducing the onset of action time. So action is going to become rapid that you can confirm from this. And when you talk about AUC, which is an indicator of bioavailability, yes, it is 17.27 in case of need drug. Now it has been enhanced to 22.26. Here, 23.14 increased to 31. 22 to 31 means almost one and a half times enhancement in the bioavailability has been taken place or it has been noted and Tmax has been reduced. So this is what is a finding which confirms, yes, it has a major role in enhancing solubility, improving DSO and enhancing the bioavailability. This was the one case what I actually wanted to share with you. The second case what I'm going to share with you is a case two, which is we wanted to explore its nanocrystal stabilization application. Because nowadays we talk a lot about nanocrystals and their stability. As you size down, the system becomes more thermodynamically unstable. And if you stabilize the system, then that is fine. Otherwise, it leads to the aggregation. So these are certain mechanisms you all are aware of how stabilization of nanomaterials takes place. So one is electrostatic stabilization. I don't go into detail. Second one is steric stabilization. And the next one is electrostatic stabilization. So what we thought, sericin being negatively charged, so probably this is a protein. It may get deposited at a surface of hydrochlorothiazide. And uh, it may form a cage. It may form a cage. And that cage is not allowing nanoparticles to come close to each other so that they will be interacting. So this is what was the hypothesis, what we proposed. And these are the results. So here you could find the initial particle size. This is, I'm talking about optimized material. So at, which was studied at uh, uh, two to eight degrees Celsius. Initial size was 251 micrometer. And uh, final size after three months became 262.44. Yes, some extent size enlargement was there. But simultaneously, we need to take into account, yes, significant stabilization also has been carried out. So at the room temperature, 261 size became 295. Say this is what is a zeta potential, which is an indicator of stability of the nano system or you can say colloidal system. So this is relatively or reasonably giving a stable system, what you can call it as. Now, next hypothesis, what we tested is this was part which I wanted to talk to you about sericin, what we did with. Second thing I wanted to, I, I would like to share with you about our experiences or what work we contributed in case of fibroid. See, fibroid is, as I said, it's hydrophobic material. And uh, it has been widely explored by the people since times immemorable, it, it has been used in India. And uh, specifically in biomedical applications, it has been used. Yes, it has been used. But what we thought, so as to customize the release, because after all, what is important in drug delivery, you should be able to customize the release. So fibrin alone cannot give a customized release. The desired release, if it has to be obtained, sometimes you have to have an addition of certain polymers, which are going to impart functionality to that system. So here, fibrin is negatively charged. Then we use alginic acid, which is again negatively charged. And we thought of electrostatic repulsion to operate between these two. And uh, probably we may get a chance. We could get a chance because of changing the amount of alginate. So we may have a customized release profiles. So that was the hypothesis with which we prepared a microspheres. So here you could find, yes, these, this is a microsphere endotherm. So in this case, phalodipine is having some crystallinity still in the microsphere form, right? Here, this is what is a neat phalodipine, and this is physical mixture. So here you can find some crystallinity is there in microsphere form also, and that has been confirmed from this. Yes, majority of part of phalodipine has gone to the amorphous state. So, but in addition to this, certain amount of crystallites are still there, and uh, because of which we can say yes, phalodipine is available in amorphous state. So when we went for spray drying, so probably that would might have happened at the zero day like whole of the phalodipine might have been transformed to the amorphous state because as I said, spray drying is a method which is used for transformation of drug to the amorphous state. But here on storage, maybe at the time of exposure during the DSC and uh, uh, then diffractometric analysis, this transition might have taken place. So, so this is what is what was our observation, what was our finding. So when it comes to the release profile, yes. So this was as per what we expected. We wanted release for almost 12 hours. 
and it qualified the criteria which has been recommended by USP, USP requirement and FDA guidance for qualifying any of the drug delivery system as extended release. Sometimes students say that the extended release of drug for say five hours and six hours and six, seven hours, and they say we prepared extended release dosage form. It's not the true. It's not the case. Actually, you need to follow these requirements. Whatever dosage form is there. So in first one hour, there has to be dissolution of drug between 15 to 40 percent. In second hour, between 25 to 60 percent. In fourth hour, between 35 to 75 percent. And in eighth hour, not less than 70 percent of drug should be dissolved. If you are fitting into this, then you can say your dosage form has been, you know, extended release dosage form. This is for 12 hours. Similar is certain different criteria for 24 hours, 24 hours as well. So here we could find anomalous results, anomalous release. So it was non-fiction and combination of erosion as well, because it was a combination of hydrophobic polymer, which is a fibrin, and hydrophilic polymer, which is a alginic acid or sodium alginate. The third case, what we wanted to explore, because there are certain limitations of microspheres. One major limitation, I must tell you, drug loading is less. And second important limitation is, again, leakage of the drug takes place from the microspheres. And that is why people have shifted their focus to the nanofibers. People prefer nanofibers because both have got huge surface area because whenever we talk about multiple unit particle system, it has got its own advantages. So obviously, we are going to reap those advantages in nanofibers as well. But in addition to this microspheres, you have got plenty of advantages which are offered by this nanofibers. So least few in NF offers low density, high pore volume, high charge to volume ratio, high drug play load. This is of more interest and high surface to volume ratio for solvation and dissolution process of poorly soluble drug, unlike microspheres. And that is why we decided to go for electro spinning of silk fibroin. And the drug which we selected, it was a philodipin. One interesting, so this is what is a formulation table which is used for optimization process. We prepare six batches. Out of this fourth was treated as optimized one. And here we could find, as far as spinnerate speed has been concerned, it has got a major role in increasing or decreasing the crystallinity of fibroin as a polymer. So here we wanted to explore this fibroin as a sole polymer for extending the release of drug. And we wanted to see how the crystallinity can be manipulated. So during the patch studies, we came across this spinnerate speed as a one parameter. And second thing, we carried out annealing using alcohol and water that also altered the crystallinity of the polymer. So obviously, whenever we talk about crystallinity, it has got a major bearing on the release. So it is going to alter the release. So obviously, when we talk about prospects of this fibroid as a polymer, plenty of opportunities are there. You can fine tune the crystallinity. You can customize the release. So these are options which are available to you. So these were the fibers which we obtained. And post-dissolution studies, post-dissolution studies here you can find in case of uh, fasted uh, FSS, GF, whatever study we carried out, simulated gastric fluid. So these are, you, you can find, see, these are the surfaces which have been eroded. These are eroded surfaces, what you could observe. So the dissolution profile of the drug from nanofibers in point one normal SCL and dissolution in fasted state simulated gastric fluid. So they were totally different. The order of release which was followed, that was also different. And these are the surfaces the way they are seen. So now, so those, whatever those nanofibers we prepared, here you can find, so this is first, A is dry powder of SAP, it is amorphous. Silk fibroin is amorphous in nature because whatever sample we use, it was freeze dried. And after freeze drying, we get amorphous material. Phenodipine, it's crystalline, a bit uh, diffractograms are not clean. So third one is physical mixture. And uh, fourth one is, uh, we have got a diffractogram of plain silk fiber and nanofibers, which is devoid of drug. And next one is with the drug. This is what is called as FDSFNF, means phalodipin loaded silk fiber nanofibers. Now, if you just compare whatever two thetas are there, certain two thetas are there, so those two thetas have totally disappeared in this E. You don't find any of the two theta which is seen in the phalodipin. It means that whenever system was designed and it was electro subject to electro spinning at that time, drug goes to the molecular level. Drug goes to the molecular level and later devitrification doesn't take place. This is an indication because I didn't show that diffractogram data here. So that stability data is also available with us. And that is an indicator of, yes, in case of microspheres, much stabilization has not been carried out at a molecular level. But whenever we talk about electrospun material, so amorphous state of the drug can be maintained. It is not allowed to devitrify. So this is amorphous drug is present in this nanofibers. 
So when we say that it is available in the amorphous form, so obviously we are going to reap all the advantages which we had uh, discussed in earlier part of my presentation. And this is what is annealing treatment has been given. So first is annealing with the water, and next one is annealing with the ethanol. So here water has enhanced the crystallinity. So this is what is thick you can observe here. So the intensity has been increased here. It means that the crystallinity of polymer has been increased because fibroin initially it exists in alpha form, but later it has got propensity to get transformed to the beta conformation. And beta conformation is a pleated conformation which is highly crystalline. And that transformation takes place in the process of electrospinning. That is what is conclusion from this. So electrospinning, yes, obviously can generate a polymer which is having certain crystallinity. See, initially in the first thermogram, what we showed it was amorphous, but when it was subjected to the electrospinning process as that of CD, to some extent you can say crystallinity has been imparted but drug is maintained in the amorphous state and a lot of people are contributing towards stabilization of amorphous state of drug in the nanofiber form. So this is what is supporting thermogram. This is plain fibroin. Next one is philodipin, physical mixture, then uh, plain silk nanofibers, which are not having a drug. Uh, then this is with the drug and this is annealed. So now whatever E thermogram is there, you can find C. So what is melting point of philodipine is this, right? Can you find melting point here? No, it is not seen. So total transformation of philodipine has taken place into the amorphous state. This is one possibility. Why I'm saying amorphous state? Because whatever molecularly dispersed drug is there in the nanofiber, on storage, it may undergo transformation. From molecular, it may reach to the stage of amorphous. From amorphism to the semi-crystalline, from semi-crystalline to the crystalline. So that is a possibility which may happen. And here you can find, so there is no endothermic transition. It means drug has been totally at a molecular level or it is available in the amorphous state and it is fully stabilized. And here annealing has carried out, see, this has become broad, but deep relatively endothermic transitions are there, which are corresponding to the energy input, which is required for melting of this polymer, which is highly crystalline. So water treatment made more, I mean, water treatment induced more crystallinity into the polymer here compared to ethanol. So obviously it is related to the orientation of 3D structure of the protein, like hydrophilic surfaces are projected outside towards the solvent and uh, whatever hydrophobic surfaces are, they go down, uh, they go to the interior, they bind with each other and they increase the crystallinity. So what is required? See, in case of floating drug delivery system, say, as we said that initially FDDS nanofibers we prepared. So this is very novel thing what we did. So see the floating profile. So it has got floating lag time 15 to 30 seconds floating time. So they can be floated for greater than 18 hours. We have written 18, but almost for all the time, it keeps on floating. Percent bias is 99%. And this is what is reflecting mucoadhesion. I think, uh, Professor Uday, how much time is there for me to extend? Uh, five minutes. Five to 10 minutes. Okay. okay. Can I extend up to 10 minutes? Mm, yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So these are the mucoadhesion parameters. Yes. Sericin is mucoadhesion, fibrin is mucoadhesion. You can take advantage of this mucoadhesion in preparation of different dosage forms. See, in vitro release kinetics, you can find when the dissolution has been carried out in FSSG app, the order of release is zero. And when in point one normal ACL, Higuchi matrix model release is followed. So this difference in the release is very important for us. And that is why I showed you in the ACM, the surface erosion aggregation has taken place. And this FSSGM has got enzymes which are proteolytic in nature. So which is going to mimic what is happening in the stomach. So next case I'm going to share with you is fibroid nanocrystal. Uh, fibroid as a nanocrystal stabilizer. It is same as that of sericin. Yes, it has stabilized. The coming to next one, mulberry leaves, which is the spent material after reading process. Whatever silicones they consume, after that, whatever is left on the trays that you can use as a material for maybe say for medicinal importance, or as I said in the beginning, whatever surplus mulberry has been cultivated. So those leaves which are surplus, they can be used for the medicinal applications. Is it something that first time I'm proposing, I'm telling you, no, it's not like that. In the rest of the world or everywhere across the globe, you will find people are consuming this mulberry for so many applications. As I said in the beginning, it is free of immortality. And that is why it has got plenty of applications. And what we thought, let us explore one activity, which is anti-diabetic standard was miglitol. Mulberry leaves powder we gave with excipient without an extract. 
so what was our conclusion yes these mulberry leaves initial after induction of the diabetes and these sugar levels sugar levels in animal models sugar levels in animal models substantially they have been reduced at 28 day so there are basically three four mechanisms by which this mulberry is acting as an anti diabetic out of that one is alpha glucosidase inhibition second is pi3k that uh, mechanism is there that what you call as uh, that uh, pathway is there and uh, uh, it acts at the glut4 uh, transporter so these are basic three mechanisms by which mulberry constituents they act as anti diabetic material so here is a very good scope for as i said like network pharmacology if people are interested they can explore it see as i said in the beginning our sole objective has to be like diversification of any of the uh, you know science or you can say any of uh, you know whenever we talk about sericulture if we diversify this obviously we can bring our some sustainable develop developments into this we can carry out value proposition to this sericulture by diversifying so many things so here you can just have a look at it we'll just glance gra through so this whatever mulberry is there it has been used in chocolates chocolates are available to the market mulberry berries you know very well so they are widely consumed by the people it is rich of antioxidants it has used they are used in cosmetics then these are the pupas which are rich of proteins then next one is mulberry the, this this is some like a cosmetic preparation which is used for removal of the blemishes sericin creams are available which are hydrophilic in nature mulberry tea is there which is available in the market i think this is written made in japan japan taiwan uh, thailand and korea then cuba so many countries they use mulberry tea as a you know routine tea and like we people and mulberry noodles have been prepared so personally even i have enjoyed this mulberry tea so many times and it is very useful it's good taste wise one can think of it you just try it and here you can have this handicraft this is what has been prepared by wife of one of my friend so this is actually ladies department they can have a look at it so these are vest cups which can be used for different applications in making of handicrafts so how we can bring about sustainable development to the sericulture obviously it is going to be sustainable development towards the nation development as well diversification of sericulture industry can carry out transformation of main mainline silk industry secondary functional industries which are related with sericulture sericin fibroin then mulberry etc surplus mulberry leaf which is used as a uh, which is currently west it can be used as a food for animals it can be converted to the green manual manure then waste products such as perforated silk cocoons literally they are thrown out nowadays or bedding left over larval dejections and mulberry plants can be reused then root and wood biomass can be used then mulberry fruits can be used sericin waste fiber and waste it can be recycled for pharma applications whatever we discuss so far pupa as a food supplement it can be tried because it is rich of proteins and ultimately which is very important which is very near to us as we can think of exploring mulberry for its medicinal importance simultaneously people have explored mulberry for cosmetic as well as food applications as well now this is what is conclusion so simply sericin can be used for improvement in solubility diso and amorphous state stabilization nano crystals can be stabilized using both sericin as well as fibroin fibroin can offer you you know uh, opportunity to customize the drug release profiles because obviously formulator wants any polymer which is going to give him opportunity to customize the release so that opportunity you can have here you can have mulberry leaves and you can use it so i have used it you can use it sericin and pupa as a nutraceutical it can be tried mulberry tea mulberry biscuits mulberry chocolate so many things are there which you can think of so finally coming to our conclusion i'm thankful to funding agencies because this pro this so, so many parts of this projects whatever i showed you they were funded by csir aict or rajiv gandhi science and technology commission mumbai shivaj university kolapur i'm thankful to them and without the help of my research scholars dr nitin salunke rani dole priya giri and prashant rathod this work would not have been possible to be completed this is a small clip which in 2014 we had entrepreneurship development program at our college it was uh, telecasted i'll just in few minutes i'll uh, uh, try to show you you just glance through हेलो जाधव सर 
हेलो जाधव सर हेलो जाधव सर जाधव सर प्ले थैंक यू हेलो हाँ यस हाँ नाउ इट्स टाइम फॉर क्वेश्चन आंसर सेशन थैंक यू डॉक्टर एन आजाद सर फॉर दिस नाइस इनोवेटिव एंड इन्फॉर्मेटिव सेशन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू इनवाइट क्वेश्चंस फ्रॉम जूम मीटिंग पार्टिसिपेंट्स आर रिक्वेस्टेड टू रेज देयर हैंड एंड म्यूट देम एंड आज द क्वेश्चन आई एस किरण पाटिल हेलो हाँ यस हाँ प्रोफेसर किरण ओके विल टेक सम क्वेश्चंस फ्रॉम द चैट बॉक्स कैन यू हियर मी यस यस यू आर ऑडिबल प्लीज विपुल कुमार प्रजापति is asking uh, which factors we have to control during formulation using sericin as it is a protein derived from silkworms see the first thing which we have to keep in mind like whatever final dosage form which you are going to prepare it has to be in solid state so this is very foremost requirement is it is it audible yes sir yes sir audible yeah. so first thing is the type of dosage form which you are going to prepare it has to be a solid state dosage form so that is one thing and second thing is like say obviously concentration is the source is there so many factors are there which has to be taken into consideration what for application you are going to use it again that is very important yes yes sir yes sir okay. uh, next yes. question from ashok behra sir yes uh, crystalline or amorphous uh, confuse uh, how to characterize that uh, it is converted amorphous to crystalline which data will confirm uh see whatever presentation we have showed so far which had diffractometric as well as thermogram data so from xrd and dsc you get to know whether it has been transformed to amorphous state or not whatever peaks of crystallinity are there if they are missing which are principal peaks i am talking about if principal peaks are missing it means that the drug or material has been transformed to the amorphous state crystalline material always shows peaks whereas amorphous material doesn't show peak so that's the basic thing and you can characterize it by xrd and dsc these are the main tools which have been widely used by the people uh, next question is again from uh, ashok behra sir why yes, uh, phenylalanine nanoparticle uh, what is the logic behind the formulation see whenever we go for certain uh, you know methodology or certain polymer to be tested we go for selection of model drugs so we selected phenylalanine as a model drug for that and we studied and we we are basically interested in use of polymer exploring what it does we are not much interested in the drug we were interested in the polymer so it was a model drug which we selected in that case and whenever we talked about say nano crystal stabilization i think hydrochlorothiazide we have used for that okay thank you sir hello sir uh, i am audible now i was yes. unmuted by uh, the yes host yes. Uh, uh, sir very excellent and interesting lecture uh, with the message of reuse reduce and recycle and really it felt that we were in the uh, college and same tone with the same excellent speech delivery very nice <laughs> presentation and it Thank is you. very fortunate 
to be learning from you still this point uh, my question uh, regarding this uh, seresin is we worked on uh, seresin as a permission and answer okay so uh, the basic question will be uh, considering the uh, properties of seresin yes. the method which we use as extraction so okay. what will be the uh, best advisory from you so that the hampering of protein material or maybe losing of molecular weight uh, okay. that will be better one and uh, what i uh, gone through this literature is that when we uh, have different components like uh, classified sericin a sericin b and c hmm. so i guess uh, the constituents will be different maybe nitrogen content i found in a different uh, a b c was a different so probably that may also impact the uh, uh, formulation so what will be your advisory pertaining to the uh, this uh, extraction as well as what will be uh, what we have to elucidate with respect to this composition okay uh, number one thing what you talked about types of series is we didn't go into the much details of it because of time constraints see what is basic thing series in is hydrophilic it is surface active and because of its surface active nature it is going to enhance the permeability number one thing there are so many reports which are available especially i must tell you about the minerals the absorption of minerals have been promoted by silk fibroin as well as sericin so this can be something which is associated with the proteins so whatever proteins we are going to consume probably maybe certain interactions are there or maybe certain route it is going to follow because of interactions which are going to take place so permeability is going to get increased so this is which is available in literature like it is going to enhance the permeability so coming to the second point the method which is to be selected right see what we decided like see, which is simple method for us because anyhow whatever series in you are going to get it is going to be from natural source being a natural source obviously heterogeneity is going to be there so that's a limitation of natural materials so we presume that s yes, heterogeneity is going to be there and let us explore it for different applications right and as you said type 1 type 2 type 3 whatever content is there while mentioning in certain slides i said if the reading of the silicon has been carried out on say resinous protein content is close to 30 to 40 right in case of okay. silicon whereas if you carry out reading on mulberry leaves that protein content goes to you know very high level maybe up to the 75% so these variations are going to be there because everything is natural that ecosystem is such a that one factor parameter you change it will alter the output so that needs to be extensively characterized which actually we go into the much depth of it like actual protein characterization and everything so if we could do that probably we could get insight into that yes. and uh, if you talked about uh, advisory what we thought of like it should be a cheaper affair because when we try to establish it as an excipient it should be cheaply available to me the process has to be simple so that is what we kept into the mind and uh, we used it uh actually what the method which i seen from that i was bit confused as uh, as we are uh, extracting a protein so uh, that was my question whether it will harm to the proteins and that that's why my question See, perception was yes, in yes, that yes, way yes. Uh, you mean to say that damage to the protein yes damage to yes See, yes yes see when you are going for acid treatment if you are going for again say alkali treatment then certain enzymatic methods are there papain has been used so obviously the hydrolysis is going to take place to some extent it depends on the process parameters which you are going to use if you extensively heat it for long times so obviously hydrolysis is going to take place molecular weight is going to drop if those process parameters are you know less intense and if you are compromising the yield then yes molecular weight is going to be high so for what application you would like to explore this will decide what you want to do okay professor thank you very much it answered all my questions thank, thank you hello thank you sir uh one more question sir from chat box hello oh, yes i am able uh, to hear you sir yes yes uh from sir ashok behra sir have you isolate sericin or purchase sir or if isolated by cell can you uh, in brief explain or refer please share how you have characterized and standardized regarding purity okay Uh, whatever sericin we got, we isolated, we separated. Rather, initially we began with 
separation of sericin from the west of reeling houses initially in the presentation only i mentioned we went to the reeling houses we collected the sericin and we, i mean what the waste water was there and we extracted uh, sericin from that we isolated we dried and we used it so that is one thing second thing is that so we got to know that so sometimes it happens like in degradation may take place so then we started extracting it from the cocoon so there was one my slide which was showing that there are five ways of extraction how the extraction can be carried out so one is related with the citric acid then papain is there then the sodium carbonate is there so these are autoclaving is there boiling in the water is there so different technologies i mean different methods of uh, extraction you can go for even plain boiling in water also can do because ultimately what we are interested in is separation of fibroin and silk sericin what you can call it as in boiling also boiling water also you can do that so here so it is up to you what method you want to go for it can be recovered from the reeling houses west also it can be separated from cocoons also and in earlier studies what actually i didn't show that is yes, there are certain protocols which are used for characterization of sericin to confirm whether this sericin has been obtained having that proper molecular weight everything everything can be confirmed and we have done that i didn't show it so everything is possible if you want you just to write me i'll mail all those papers to you thank you sir uh, rajesh kumar uh, he is asking which indian university is providing research in sericulture regarding to pharmacy uh, actually there are certain institutes uh, in india which are called as central uh, silk or sericulture something central sericulture institutes are there something silk say, one is i think in bangalore or somewhere so central government undertakings are there they deal with the sericin and all so they work you know for uh, for increasing the productivity then modification at genetic level everything they do and uh, i think you can get information from that as well and second thing is that person from any university can uh, undertake this work so there are central institutes related with the sericulture board is there sericulture board of india is there even across the globe there is one board uh, which is dealing with the sericulture business especially they deal with uh, diversification of sericulture as well as the production of silk so At, at global level, there is one board which is sericulture board, uh, called a sericulture board, and simultaneously we have got uh, uh, in India sericulture board as well. Uh, next question is from uh, Moini Zado. Uh, is there any antigenic reaction found by use of sericin in formulation as it uh, yes. induces yes, some yes. immunological response? Yes, it has been reported in certain subjects. Sericin may be antigenic. It has been reported. One has to be very cautious. because whatever we consume no one knows to whom it is going to show allergenicity or certain reactions but fibroin is totally free of allergenicity there is not even single report which reports about uh, allergenic response which is evoked by fibroin there is in some cases it has been evoked okay thank you sir uh, i hand over to uh, rakesh dawale sir we will take some questions from uh, youtube channel hello yeah dr anand sir can you hear me sir? yes 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 yeah. i am able to hear you uh, yeah uh, it was a nice presentation and uh, uh, feedback is good uh, it was very informative also there are few questions in youtube chat box uh, faculty akita thare assistant professor singhar college of pharmacy pune uh, she asked if you use sil fibron fibroin then there is an immune response uh, see in case of silk fibroin immune response has never been reported it is nowhere documented because since long time silk fibroin has been used as a suture material it's a biodegradable and biocompatible material it is used for ligation and suturing purpose so for fibroin there is no immunity at all yes as i said earlier obviously for uh, sericin it is there Yes. <coughs> Hello, Dr. Sir. Hello. Yeah. Hello, uh, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sir, another question from uh, faculty. 
uh, can we use it in ophthalmic drug delivery system, particularly in ophthalmic insert? Yes. Uh, in case of fibroin, certainly we can use. A lot of papers are a lot of papers are available use on use of fibroin in uh, uh, preparation of officers. Even we two are working on it. It can be very well used. It is very safe. Absolutely no issues. Okay. It's a protein. Good questions, uh, Amol Shete sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sericin and fibroin are categorized as a graph molecules, generally regarded as safe molecules. Mm -hmm. And uh, next question is, what is degradation mechanism after oral administration? So it's a simple hydrolysis because it is a protein. Being protein, it is subject to uh, it is subject to uh, breakdown because of the proteolytic enzymes which are there in the stomach. It's a simple mechanism, degradation by proteolysis. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Uh, these were only a few questions from YouTube chat box. Uh, now, I will, I will, I would like to request Dr. Uh, Diti Kaipar, sir, to give a vote of thanks. Diti Kaipar, sir. Thank you, sir. On behalf of Bharti Vidyapit College of Pharmacy, Kolhapur, I would like to express our sincere thanks to Dr. Jado, sir, for sharing his expertise and experience in insight to silicature recycled waste for pharmaceutical waste. He has given detailed insight to silicature. He touched on by various case studies like amorphous form stabilization, nanocrystal stabilization by silk sericin, fibron alginate, philodipine, FTDS, microsphere, yeah, silk fibrin, extended release, electrospone nanofiber, fibroin as nanocrystal, and preclinical studies of it for anti-diabetic effect. We appreciate your efforts for explaining all components of silicon in simple manner. I must mention deep sense of appreciation of his knowledge and presence. You address all questions, queries of delegates. I wish that information is very informative to all delegates, will be helpful in their research in this direction. Thank you very much for spending valuable time with us. Thank you, sir. All to Professor U.S. Potter, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Professor D.T. Gaikwad, sir. Uh, now we are moving towards the valedictory function of faculty development program. Uh, Mori, sir. Hi, yes, I'm here. Uh, shall we start? Hello. Shall we start uh, with no the valedictory? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. On behalf of uh, Bharti Vidyapit College of Pharmacy, Kolhapur, I give very warm welcome to all the dignitaries, respected Dr. H. N. Morrisar, Principal, Bharti Vidyapit College of Pharmacy, Kolhapur. Uh, Dr. N. R. Hello. Uh, Dr. Yeah, N. R. Zadov, yes. I just want to light switch. Switch okay. Switch open. Yes, yes. We'll wait. Yes. All the participants are requested to wait. There are some uh, technical glitches.
हेलो प्रिंसिपल सर पाटिल सर आई थिंक प्रिंसिपल सर इज नॉट इन रूम द वन इज इन द रूम इज इन द रूम रिकॉर्ड सर यस सर the one who is free can go downstairs and uh, you just uh, go through like whatever the other sir the other sir is there uh, the one who is free can do that okay what sir. has happened हॅलो हॅलो हा हॅलो सर हा यस झालं घेऊन ते लाईट गेला एकदम त्याच्यामुळे या नो प्रॉब्लेम थँक्यू सर ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ भारतीय विद्यापीठ कॉलेज ऑफ फार्मसी कोल्हापूर आय गिव्ह व्हेरी वॉर्म वेलकम टू ऑल द डिग्नेटरीज रिस्पेक्टेड डॉक्टर एच एन मोरे सर प्रिन्सिपल भारतीय विद्यापीठ कॉलेज ऑफ फार्मसी कोल्हापूर डॉक्टर एन आर जाधव सर कन्व्हेनर ऑफ दिस वन वीक ऑनलाईन फॅकल्टी डेव्हलपमेंट प्रोग्राम डॉक्टर डी ए भागवत सर चीफ कॉर्डिनेटर ऑफ फॅकल्टी डेव्हलपमेंट प्रोग्राम अँड ऑल द डेलिगेट्स फॉर दिस व्हॅलिडेक्टरी फंक्शन ऑफ वन वीक ऑनलाईन फॅकल्टी डेव्हलपमेंट प्रोग्राम ऑन इनोव्हेटिव्ह ट्रेंड्स इन फार्मास्युटिकल सायन्सेस नाव आय वुड लाईक टू रिक्वेस्ट आवर बिलोड प्रिन्सिपल डॉक्टर एच एन मोरे सर to kindly address the delegates on occasion of this valedictory function over to you sir thank you professor dr uh, patil sir and uh, good, very good afternoon to all delegates respected uh, professionals it uh, is indeed a pleasure to talk in front of all the delegates and i hope all of you have enjoyed all these seven day deliberations of the faculty development program on innovative trends in pharmaceutical sciences organized by bharti vidyapeet college of pharmacy kolapur i must thank the convener of this uh, dr enar jado and the coordinators his team professor oh. us patil rakesh dhawle dr durga charan bhagwat kt gaikwad and other members of the team for very nice arrangement organization of this one week faculty development program dear friends we all are in a very noble profession that is a teaching profession and as you know the vitality of any educational organization is depends on the vitality of its faculty and definitely this faculty development program i think is a stand alone educational pedagogy which enforces or fosters the professional development and professional upliftment of the teaching community and dear delegates wish that all these seven deliberations in this faculty development program might have fulfilled your aspirations and definitely you will take 
a very important value or take away from this faculty development program for your career as a good teacher rather i will say as a great teacher so once again i am very much thankful to all of you i appreciate your efforts your motivation to join this faculty development program and happy to see that more than 700 participants from the various corners of the country almost i think uh, more than 15 states the candidates from the various 15 states have been participated in this faculty development program so once again i am thankful to all of you and wish you all the best for your future thank you over to patil sir thank you so much sir for your constant support and motivation for this remarkable and memorable event organization and success now i uh, would like to request dr nr jadhav sir convener of faculty development program to address the delegates about the outcome of this program dear delegates a very good afternoon to all of you i take this opportunity to welcome you all for a valedictory session of actually a national level it was one week online faculty development program on innovative trends in pharmaceutical sciences indeed we are extremely happy and delighted by overwhelming response which we showed for this apdp i'm sure you all might have enjoyed all seven sessions active engagement of 700 delegates from the 15 different states really awesome we appreciate Dear colleagues, the objective of this APDP was to deliberate on frontier areas in the research arena and update the faculty about innovative trends in the field of pharmaceutical sciences. I hope the team of eminent speakers did extremely well for updating in the field. Friends, as we all are a part of advanced science and cutting edge technologies in the field of pharmaceutical industry, also the things are changing at a rapid pace. And I'm sure the deliberations might have helped you to gear up and sharpen your professional skills. it might be it might have surely helped you to foresee the innovative trends which are likely to dominate the field of pharmaceutical sciences in future certainly advanced understanding of micro needles artificial intelligence lifestyle the lifestyle and lifetime technology would help you to pave the way for your journey towards fringe areas that pharmacists need to touch up on secondly the understanding of super saturated solutions might have had enlightened you to think and resolve the problems the current growing market of biosimilars has alerted me also you also need to ponder over for sustainable developments in many field diversification recycling and reuse applies as a thumb rule hence if you dwell over west of sericulture industry and contemplate over them would certainly open up a new vista for pharmaceutical science especially in india the value proposition should be a part of each and every innovation we make as an academician thumb rule of patent publish prosper needs to be remembered or publish and perish i'm sure during this apdp you might have been satisfied and benefited up to your expectation that is the actual take away and greatest achievement of this apdp hope your learning environment was very conducive our entire team of bharti vidyapeeth college of pharmacy kolapur had a immense pleasure to serve you throughout this apdp i wish every best for your future learning as well thank you over to you professor vivek patel thank you dr anna jado sir now we are uh, eager to hear feedback from the delegates i would like to request few delegates to express their opinion about this fdp uh, those who wish to give feedback uh, please unmute yourself and express your views their delegates are requested to unmute themselves and express their views about this fdp anyone from delegates hello is there anyone to interested otherwise i will yes uh, yes continue kiran okay. uh, i am professor kiran patil from uh, tata sat pure college of pharmacy you might have been all the delegates seen me for asking many of the questions during entire sessions Uh, first of all i would like to thank all the stakeholders for bharti vidyapeeth college of pharmacy for organizing this one week online faculty development program 
and uh, personally i really appreciate the topic innovative trends in pharmaceutical sciences as we know and uh, we are suffering from covid 19 we see that education 4.0 and industry 4.0 uh, we uh, this becomes the need of the day and uh, that actually grabbed in this particular work, uh, fdp we are taking uh, you are taking this uh, entire session through uh, industry uh, education 4.0 and you are grabbing the entire resource through education 4.0 with industry 5.0 so this is i can see a best amalgamation of the Uh, e fdp uh, the sessions were completely aligned with respect to this innovative trends and what i found personally is that whatever sub uh, sessions were there they were different sectors like stability medical devices uh, then uh, i guess uh, some of the bio signals uh, then uh, ip ip area so uh, these all these sectors were found to be uh, having a different niche area and all all overall sessions were informative and resourceful on behalf of audience i'm really thankful to all that eminent speakers and surely it will help us to lend us hand in to work on new research areas so finally i really congratulated for to this successful organization of efdp uh, principal honorable dr h n more sir uh, dr n r jado sir my teacher convener of this workshop and uh, uh, we found no glitches uh, the two coordinators uh, chief coordinators dr d a bhagwat and dr us patil sir uh, for their uh, uh, this uh, conduction of this workshop and uh, entire pharmaceutical department my teacher hazare sir shinde sir everyone has contributed lot to make this event successful i am really once again thankful to arranging this efdp and giving us the opportunity to let us know about the frontiers in this innovative trends in pharmaceutical sciences thank you very much sir thank you kiran sir for your valuable remarks uh, anybody from delegates is hello hello ha ah, yes ha question sir raut madam हाँ माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर इंद्रानी राव राजारंग पप्पू कॉलेज ऑफ़ फार्मेसी कैसे गाओ आई एम वेरी मच थैंकफुल टू भारतीय विद्यापीठ कॉलेज ऑफ़ फार्मेसी कोल्लापुर फॉर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग एक्सेलेंट फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम ऑन इनोवेटिव ट्रेंड्स इन फार्मास्यूटिकल साइंसेस वी गेन अ लॉट्स � and all the speakers put uh, great efforts in giving a new insight of pharmaceutical sciences in in this one week so uh, i am very much thankful to dr hn hn more sir uh, dr nr jadhav sir dr bhagwat sir us patil sir rakesh dave sir and hazari sir and all the uh, other faculty members who are involved in the organizing the same fdp so thank you so much once again and congratulate to all for such a successful fdp thank you Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you very much. Hello. 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 Afternoon, sir. Ah, yes, yes, continue. Hi, sir. Ah, uh, uh, very much. Ah, uh, so much of good. Ah, uh, information information we are collecting from the FDP program. Thank you so much, sir, for uh, organizing such a nice. Uh, for thank us. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Moini. Uh, any delegate delegate from the? I think Mr. Ganesh Gadekar would like to speak something. He had raised his hand. Hello, Ganesh. Ganesh is there. Hello. Am I audible? Ah, yes. Yeah. Um. Actually, uh, I wanted to uh, record. two things regarding the fdp uh, no doubt the fdp was really an excellent one and enriching us with the uh, novel topics but you organizers have made us to uh, assign the graded and ungraded quiz and that was a really a fantastic idea that every participant in spite of looking after the certificates hello 
am i audible yeah yeah yes. continue continue yeah, yeah. in spite of uh, uh, paying a more interest in gaining the certificates really the sessions have made us to listen to each and every moment of the session due to the speaker's quality expertise and really made us to solve the quiz on our own so th that was a brilliant idea that made us to stay uh, connected with the sessions and due to the speakers as well as due to the questionnaires so i thank the to dr hn more sir dr nr jadhav sir the entire team including uh, dawle sir bhagwat sir hazare sir dinanath gaikwad sir so i thank everyone for conducting such a uh, innovative session for us so thank you thank you ganesh sir for your influential words hello yes hello ha good afternoon one and all i sujit arun desai anna saheb dange college of pharmacy asta first of all i thanks to bharti vidyapeeth college of pharmacy kolapur for arranging efdp on innovative trends in pharmaceutical sciences it is a really a nice thing that has been done by bharti vidyapeeth college of pharmacy kolapur in this pandemic situation covid 19 for us already professor ganesh gadekar sir said every day yeah, the okay. organizing committee team that has arranged uncredited quiz for us that is a really helpful after listening the resource persons we had solved that quiz again all the resource person from day one as also uh, kiran patil sir already mentioned that variety uh, different aspects every day a subject knowledge that gain a lot much thing during this efdp sessions once again i'd like to thanks dr hn more sir principal bbcp kolapur convener of this efdp dr professor nr jadhav sir again chief coordinator dr bhagwat sir uday patil sir dawe sir all the team bbcp kolapur organizing committee once again i'd like to uh, thanks all thank you very much thank you sir hello 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 ha ah, yes hello ha ah, dr vihar sarunke speaking here hello ha ah, yes sir yes sir yes sir ha ah, i am very much thankful i am behalf of the participant i am very much thankful for the dr <coughs> hn more sir the principal and the coordinator and the team of this college because uh, here uh, all they have arranged the good coordination for this program faculty development program and uh, we got the theoretical knowledge because what is actually happening in pharmaceutical industry and what is the given in our syllabus much of the pharmaceutical knowledge the concept of pharmaceutical dosage form nano drug delivery system vesicular drug delivery system stability aspect all uh, that is very wonderful and uh, we got the theoretical as well as the, some of the uh, basic knowledge from the good uh, presentation and a uh, very well known presentation is given by dr nr jadhav sir actually he is very well known person for this pharmaceutics so very good presentation and uh, again once uh, on behalf of participant we are all the participant and myself we are very much thankful for this bharti vidyapeeth who have arranged this uh, <coughs> best program okay thank you thank you sarankesh sir for your valuable ah. remarks okay so with this uh, i am very much thankful to all the delegates for their inspiring uh, remarks and nice expression of uh, views about this fdp we are getting also uh, feedbacks in the uh, chat group now uh, with this i would like to request dr da bhagwat sir chief co uh, coordinator of the fdp to propose vote of thanks thank you patil sir a uh, very good afternoon to one and all uh, respected principal honorable dr hn more sir convener of this fdp dr nr jadhav sir coordinator professor us patil sir all respected delegates from different institutions and my dear fellow colleagues i feel honored and privileged to get an opportunity to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion i on behalf of bharti vidyapeeth college of pharmacy kolapur 
convey a deep regards and hearty thanks to honorable dr h m kadam sir regional director bharti vidyapeet sangli for his constant support my sincere thanks to our beloved principal dr h n more sir for his support inspiration and our to our guidance for successful conduction of this fdp i must express deep gratitude to all invited eminent speakers dr kartik nair sir dr santosh bote sir dr abhay sangamwar sir dr srinivas saule sir dr pradeep patil sir dr ashok hazare sir and dr nr jadhav sir i am thankful to all eminent speakers for accepting our invitation and for very informative and interactive deliberations in fdp i convey thanks to all respected delegates from institute of every corner of india and some from abroad also for your active participation in this fdp i hope all of you have enjoyed all information session i also wish to express my sincere thanks to dr nr jadhav sir convener of this fdp us patil sir coordinator of this fdp and all my beloved colleagues from pharmaceuticals department and all faculty members non teaching staff and students for constant support for successful conduction of this fdp uh, before concluding this fdp i wish to inform you that uh, regarding tomorrow schedule of certificate distribution uh, tomorrow you will get uh, one pdf file on official whatsapp group of this fdp and to your registered email id uh, this pdf file contain your registration number your name and link of feedback form and graded quiz in front of your name uh, you have to click link only in front of your name and please uh, give your valuable feedback on abdp and solve the graded quiz after successful submission you will get certificate of completion of this abdp on your register email id Uh, so once again on behalf of management principal vice principal teaching and non teaching staff students i am very much thankful to all of you uh, and with kind permission of principal dr h n more sir uh, okay. i declare that this uh, one week online fdp on innovative trends in pharmaceutical sciences is concluded I have a great day ahead stay home stay safe thank you thank you very much thank you bhagwat sir once again uh, i thank you all the delegates for huge success of this faculty development program and with this i declare this one week online faculty development program is concluded hello hello uh, photograph koni te mante ekada click geta yeto ka bagana sa yes sir yes next shot gya ekada screen sir request all participants can to video on their video uh, video on uh, all the participant requested to on their video yeah. नेक्स्ट तीन से Yes, Professor Uday, is it taken? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you all the delegates. Now we'll end the meet. Okay. Okay, thank you. हेलो 
Ini tuh sabar terus.